I would like to greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today I will be reading Psalm 140. When Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob, from a people of foreign tongue, Judah became God's sanctuary, Israel his dominion. The sea looked and fled, the Jordan turned back, the mountains skipped like rams, the hills like lambs. Oh, why was it, O oh, sea, that you fled, O oh, Jordan, that you turned back? You mountains that skipped like rams, you hills like lambs, tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of, of the God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a pool, who, the hard rock into springs of water. Amen. Well, good morning, praise God. Thank you for joining us this morning. We are so honored to have you join us this morning. And thank you so much for inviting us into your home this morning. Good morning, brothers and sisters, family of God. This is a wonderful Sunday indeed. And we want to thank the Lord that He has given us this beautiful day. We praise Him and we bless Him. And we thank God, even today being Women's Day, I'd like to wish all the lovely ladies out there a happy Women's Day. Over to you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Happy Women's Day to all the ladies. Praise God. Now this morning, uh, before we go into the Word of God, I think it would only be right if we opened up this morning's program with a word of prayer as we prepare our hearts to receive God's precious Word. Heavenly Father, this morning we thank you for your Word. We thank you, Father God, that Father, your Word will bring faith, it will bring healing, it will bring strength, O oh God, where it's needed, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we pray a special prayer over all women this day, being Women's Day. We pray that your blessing be upon them. We pray that your grace will abound towards them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Father, we just pray as we will share your word this morning, O oh Lord, that it will be a word, Father, that will bring, O oh Lord God, faith, in Jesus' name, I thank you that you will anoint my vocal cords this morning to Lord God to share your word with your people. We ask this in Jesus' blessed name and the people of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Well, praise God this morning. This morning, I'd like to open up in the book, in the gospel rather, the gospel of John, St. John's gospel, chapter number 2. And beginning on uh, at verse number one, we find now here the Bible says, On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. So this is the third day, which is basically the second day after Jesus meets with, um, with Philip. And we find in the preceding verses, in, towards the end of chapter one, um, Jesus has an encounter with Philip and Philip goes to Nathaniel and he tells Nathaniel that they found him who is Messiah and we find Nathaniel um, saying in verse number 46 in John 1 uh, Nathaniel says to Philip now can anything good come out of Nazareth and Philip says to him come and see in other words you don't believe me come see for yourself and now that's the second day and now the third day we find that um, Jesus and his disciples uh, find themselves at a wedding where Jesus and his disciples were both were all invited and in verse number three of chapter two the Bible says when they ran out of wine the mother of Jesus says to Jesus they have no wine I can imagine the um, embarrassment of the family that you know you uh, a wedding is normally supposed to be a joyful celebration and it's a very auspicious occasion and now having run out of wine it's probably an embarrassment to the family so jesus says to his mother he says in verse 4 woman what does your concern have to do with me my hour has not yet come uh, the mother of jesus watch this type of faith pastor sharon the mother of jesus says to the servants 
Whatever he says to you, do it. Whatever he says to you, do it. In other words, regardless of what Jesus says, but there's something that was probably in the tone in which Jesus spoke that prompted a faith response from her, that she starts speaking to the people around her and she says, whatever he tells you to do, do it. I'm reminded in Jeremiah, uh, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, verse 1, where the Lord appears to Jeremiah the prophet, and he tells Jeremiah, stand up to your feet and go to the house of the potter, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Jeremiah gets there, and the potter is busy with, with the clay. And we find here now, Kind of the same thing, where Mary says to the servants, whatever he tells you to do, do it. In other words, just be obedient. Now there were six water pots in verse 6. There were six water pots of stone. <laughs> wow, praise God. Six water pots of stone. Stone resembling um, difficulty. Stone resembling hardship. And we find that there were six water pots of stone according to the manner of purification of the Jews. And these uh, water pots contain, uh, they could hold 20 to 30 gallons apiece. And Jesus says, uh, says to all the servants, he says, fill the water pots with water. And they fill them up to the brim. And he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. And when the master of the feast had tasted it, tasted the water that was made wine, and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew. The master of the feast called the bridegroom. Now this is the master of ceremonies. He goes to the bridegroom, he calls him up, and he says to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. Wow, praise God. That's kind of symbolic of life. Many times we find in our lives, growing up in life as young, as, as young people, as you go through life, you find that some people kind of think that they have it all, or they think that, you know, their lives is, is, is uh, you know, they are really living their lives. But you're not really living your life until you have an encounter with Jesus. Amen. So what happens now is we find that the water runs uh, the, 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 the wine rather, the wine runs out. Probably your life is like that this morning where you've run out of your joy. Something's probably stolen your joy. Something has probably uh, caused you to lose your peace, your peace of mind. You know, and, and we find that there's so many things that happen in our lives that um, cause us to get to places where you find probably you've lost hope. And you think you're at the end of your rope. You're at the end of your life. But praise God, that is just where God will begin. We find the water pots, as I shared with you earlier on, uh, a, stone, a stone pot mm -hmm. resembling the hardness. Yes. Sometimes you feel that life is so hard that it's so difficult for God to come through. And you know, God cannot be confounded to our mind. God is bigger than our mind. And what God is looking for, I believe, Pastor Sharon, in this hour, is faith. Mm -hmm. Because He's a faith God. He moves, he moves where there's faith. Mm -hmm. Your faith brings God to the scene. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says to Mary, my hour or my time has not yet come. And I believe now in your life, wherever you are, wherever you are sitting, I believe right now that this is a time for God to manifest His glory. This is a time for God to show up in your life. In verse 11, the Bible says, This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee. Wow, in Cana of Galilee. That means that wherever your geographical location is, God can show up and God can do something there. And the Bible says the beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested His glory. He revealed His glory and His disciples believed in Him. It's kind of symbolic of our new birth experience. When you come to know the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, He fills your life with all that which is His. He imparts to you 
his divinity, his divine life, he, he imparts that into your life. You find now all of a sudden your life changes. And that's the glory of it is that Jesus can take a prostitute and turn a prostitute into an evangelist that will stand on the corner and now preach the gospel, the message of Christ. He'll take a thief and he'll turn the life of a thief around. He'll take a murderer and he'll turn the life of a murderer around. What you see, sometimes society will write off people and you're probably there now this morning. People have written you off, but God hasn't written you off. I believe God is about to begin a good work in your life. So regardless of your situation, regardless of your circumstance, right there where you are, God can do something for you, just for you. The Bible says this is the beginning of signs which Jesus performed in Cana of Galilee. When you receive Jesus, that is the beginning of your miracles. The, the greatest miracle is the miracle of salvation. I always say that the greatest miracle is not a blind man receiving his sight. It's not a deaf a deaf person receiving their hearing. It's not a lame person receiving life to their limbs. The greatest miracle is salvation because without salvation you cannot you cannot go to heaven you cannot see God and you cannot spend eternity with him amen praise God now I believe that that's what God is saying this morning that bring your circumstance to him bring your pain to him He's, he is the healing balm of Gilead and he'll bring healing to that pain he'll soothe that pain bring those tears to him he'll turn those tears into tears of joy bring uh, that sickness or that disease or that infirmity bring it to him and he will manifest his healing power that is the God we serve that is the Jesus whom we serve and that is the Jesus who loved us so much and he gave his life just for you just for me for all of us that we can receive this abundant life in Christ Jesus I want to close off with the um, uh, from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter number 43 and uh, verse 18 to 19 where the Lord says, do not remember the former things. Mm -hmm. You know, very often we go through life and we always base our lives on our past and we're looking at our past and we allow the past to dictate to us our present and our future. But that is irrelevant with God, I believe. I believe God has got something glorious for us. And that's why it's very important that you do not remember the former things. Do not remember the old things. Do not remember the old you. God says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. You know, look at that wedding. That the, you know, the wine had run out. There was no more wine. And probably the celebration would have stopped. But here Mary comes to Jesus. Jesus says to her that my hour has not come. Mary responds in faith. Mm. And she starts gathering the people around her. It's probably you. You've got to probably respond in faith. Get people around you. Surround yourself with people of faith. Because it's very important because things rub off. On others so if you're around if you surround yourself with people who are afraid all the time and people who are full of fear you're going to automatically be a person that's always walking in fear a person that's walking in doubt so it's important surround yourself with people of faith so that they can impart faith to you and encourage you and um, the Lord says do not consider the former things of old no consider the, no consider the things of old behold I will do a new thing now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness. In other words, where there is no way, God is saying, I will make a way and rivers in the desert. What you consider to be dry and dreary and boring, God will turn that around into an oasis. Into an, an oasis. He will make rivers in the desert. Praise God. The Message Bible says it this way. It says, forget about what's happened. Forget about what's happened. So whatever's happened in your life, forget about it. Get over it. Turn a new leaf. It says, don't keep going over old history. Don't worry about history. Leave history in the past where it belongs. He says, be alert. Be present. Wow, I like that. Be present. Be where I am. 
I'm about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? There it is. I'm making a road through the desert. I'm making rivers in the badlands. God is turning your bad into something good. Amen. Isaiah 40 verse 3 to 5. The Bible says the voice of one crying in the wilderness. We saw this with John the Baptist. Prepare the way of the Lord. Wow. It's like that's what Mary was saying to the people around her. Yes, it may look like everything is dry. It may look like everything is run out. It may look like there's no more hope. It may look like it's probably there's probably a mother watching us, Pastor Sharon, this morning who's lost hope in her children because she feels that the children are probably sold out probably to drugs, probably to gangsterisms. These are things that are happening in our lives on a daily basis. But our word of encouragement, and this is what God is saying to that mother, do not lose hope, mother. Do not lose hope. Do not lose hope. Do not be, be in despair. God is about to come through. Praise God. Hallelujah. Prepare the way of the Lord. That's what Mary was telling them when she says, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Beloved, at the end, or should I rather say, on the other side of obedience is blessing. So God, when God calls you to do something, is because you're going to cross over. You're crossing over. Yes, it may look bad where you are right now, but whatever he tells you to do, do it. Because the minute you take that first step of faith, the minute you cross over, you're crossing over into the promise. I mean, that is Canaan. Canaan is before you. You cannot... You cannot enjoy Canaan unless you are in Canaan. So you've got to cross over. And that is where you receive the promise. That is where the blessing is. It says, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Wow. God is waiting for a highway. He's waiting for somebody that will just believe Him and have faith in Him so that He can come through and manifest His glory. It says, make straight in the desert, a highway for our God. Every valley, watch, every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight and the rough places smooth. God is about to smoothen those rough places in your life that you will not remember it before. Yes, probably you may, you know, you may have the scars to prove it, but he's the healing balm of Gilead. He will soothe the pain and he will wash it. He'll wipe away the memory of the bad things in your life. The Bible goes on to say, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. We just read that just now. When Jesus manifested his glory to his disciples. I wonder what that Nathaniel must have said. He's the one that said, can anything come good out of Nazareth? And here Jesus manifests his glory, manifests that he is the Messiah. He is the son of God. And that is how people get to know who the son of God is, is when Jesus transforms the life of an individual. And that is what it's all about. He is the Messiah. People come to know Jesus through lives, the lives of people, ordinary people, such as you and I. Praise God. Hallelujah. When, when he turns your life around, people can't think that, my word, is this the same person that was doing this yesterday? But praise God, it's a new person. Now it's a new creation. That's what the Bible said. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. God is saying, I'm doing a new thing. So, mother, God is going to do a new thing for you in the life of your child this morning. It says, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Praise God. I believe when God speaks something, He speaks, He speaks and He performs. He's a performer of His word. He's not a God or He's not, rather, He's not like man. Man will give you a word and tomorrow change His word. And that's how people are. That's how mortal men are. People change. People you know, are never the same, but God is always the same. And that's what God does. He transforms the life. And I believe He'll transform your life this morning. He'll transform your family. He'll transform everything there is about you. The important thing is 
to like Jeremiah, put yourself in the potter's house, put yourself in the place where you can hear the word of God and you'll find that the word of God will start brimming over and all of a sudden everything about you will change. Everything about your life will change. Amen. It's like a transformer, Pastor Sharon. You know, if you speak to an electrician or you speak to an uh, electrical engineer, they'll tell you what transformers are used for. Transformers basically are used for either stepping up or stepping down uh, electrical current, depending on on the, 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 the specific current that is actually required to feed the power to wherever it is needed. Mm -hmm. And I believe that as we go, you know, into the Word of God and we you know, we, 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 we work on our relationship with Jesus as our Lord and Savior. You know, we, we get transformed. Mm -hmm. in, in, in fact, I believe with Jesus, Pastor Sharon, it is not like the electrical story where there's a stepping down of the current. With Jesus, there's a stepping up. Because He steps us up into His glory, into His presence. And I believe that is what it's all about. And that is what God wants to do in this hour, is to transform lives and to transform all the hurts and the pains into joy once again. Amen. Praise God. Well, that's the word that the Lord has laid upon my heart this morning. And um, uh, being Mother's Day, I would just also like at this point in time, sorry, being Woman's Day, sorry, being Woman's Day, um, I would like to hand over to Pastor Sharon, who's going to close this morning's broadcast with what the Lord has laid on her heart and a prayer for all our wonderful women out there. Amen. Well, Pastor Ricardo, it could be Women's Day or Mother's Day. Amen. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's all about the woman figure. That's what we celebrate. And Pastor, has given, you've given us lots of lovely word today, encouragement mm. that we should move in faith and do what He says. That's what Jesus' mother said, do as He says. Amen. And that's what we should be doing. We should, if we are doing what He says we're doing, then we're really moving in faith. Because we can pray and we can quote scriptures, but as long as we do not believe and speak that word, it won't work for us. Amen. We've got to believe in the word that we're speaking for. If you say that I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus and you know, you believe and you have faith that that word works, it shall work for you. Amen. It will In no way it won't work. Amen. We've tried it and we've seen Amen. that we... God's word never fails. Amen. 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 And just Amen. like that, like Pastor said, it's Women's Day. I have a little two scriptures taken from Proverbs chapter 31, which we all know. It's always usually related to women. Which, which says, she is not afraid of the snow for her household. For all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Now, when we read that, we're not God's not just in, we're not just being informed about what we wear on the outside, but there is something. There is something that we are living for right now in this time where the woman is a pillar of a home, Amen. where the woman it should be the prayer warrior of that home. That's right. It, it, I know some of us may be not at home all the time, but mm. being a pillar is somebody that covers that home with scarlet keeps that home covered with the blood of Jesus, keeps that home functioning. There has to be a functioning element of every home where the woman needs to know constantly and every, every moment of every day where her mind is at. Amen. Her mind has to be at the feet of Jesus. She has Amen. to know really what does she really belong to. It's not about the covering only on the outside. That is important. It may be important to you. But there is something about the soul. The soul that, that needs a, a covering. We need to cover the souls of our home. Because that soul does not die. It's that soul that goes on to live forevermore. Amen. So when we have faith, we're covering our souls. We're protecting the one that needs to know either it is going to have an everlasting life or an everlasting be thrown out to everlasting damnation because mm. that is where we're living at right now mm. we're, we're coming to a point where we hear today so and so is no more or we hear that suddenly somebody is no more in the state that they were tomorrow or yesterday mm. so we need to protect the soul we need mm. to speak this word we need to do as he says like the mother knew her son had 
potential. He had the power to do miracles. Now he's given us that potential. So we need to cover our home. Woman, we need to cover our home. Right. We need to cover our children with prayer. We mm -hmm. need to, to be the one that God said in these last days he will use us to do greater things than, than, than these, which is the miracle worker, the one that prays, the one that is praying for others out there in the world that needs to be saved, praying for the peace of God's people. That's what God is talking about here. Keeping things covered. That's the covering that God is, not just the covering that we think that we need to have the best, but the best is the word of God. That yes, word never fails. Amen. Amen, Pastor. Amen. Mm. So I, I just thought that that is so relevant for today, knowing that we are the, the, the we may be the woman and the man, yes, is the head of the home, but not every home has a man as the head of the home. Mm, so they too true. can come in. They too need to know that they have a. They need to cover their, their home, cover the children. If there's no children, they need to cover somebody. Maybe there's your parents that you can cover. Maybe mm. there's loved ones that you can cover. Call them forth to the Lord because Jesus, we yes. need these people to be saved. We don't want to look at photos one day and say, you know, that one I remember and today he's gone. But where is that person gone to? Yeah, that's that's right. the thing. The mm. thing is not crying on that particular day and looking for photos. Photos, but rather today take that photo and pray for that person pray for the person while the person has life because yes. we're coming to a time where we hear of sudden 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 deaths sudden calling yeah, away so and so we thank God that we can pray for one another and uplift one another that's the purpose of a woman in a home mm. you've been taken as a woman from a man's rib because you are the nurturing part. Mm -hmm. You cover the heart. You cover the lungs. Those are the two fundamental Jesus. important organs of life. functioning in a life. Mm -hmm. yeah. The heart, once it's gone, it's gone. That's the right. lungs don't breathe. There's that no is life. why we protect our heart and our life. That's why we're taken from a man's ribcage. To protect, to be the protector. To be the nourisher. Amen. Amen. He's not only nourishing with food. That's right. <laughs> but, Hallelujah. you know, just to keep the happiness, keep That's things it. alive, yes. keep things joyful. Amen. You have a fundamental role. Amen. You can either break things down or you can make things up. up. Amen. And the other thing that's so important as a woman is to walk in love and forgiveness. Amen. It can become so hard sometimes to forgive. But once you can forgive, you, you shed off a whole lot of burdens and you walk so freely with the Lord your prayer can go up to the to the to the heavens you have Amen. no obstruction Amen. and you know that when you die or when that person dies mm. you how are you going to forgive someone you haven't forgiven that's right you how are you going more. to you live the regret of the of the photos and and and, and then yeah what are we going to say when we stand before God mm. so I thank God that's a little word that I had and we have much more that we can talk about. Oh, that's right. Because we're living in a very, very exciting time. Amen. We can change it to say that it's exciting. Amen. Never mind it can be a pandemic. Yeah. But how much has this taught us yes. to, to, to love, to be caring? Amen. Because we're coming to a point where we, we, we realize that that person is so important. Maybe you mm. saw this person today. And what if you don't see that person tomorrow? Mm, so right. we thank God. And I just like me and pastor that we could just say a small prayer and <clears throat> i mean there's nobody like jesus amen amen father we want to thank you father that in these times lord jesus oh god we thank you that we could listen to your word father yes, father. because your word is a life father amen. There is no word like your word, Jesus, O oh God. Amen. You are that word, Father. You are the word, and the word is love, Father. Yes. We can't live without these, without love, Father. You said the greatest of all this is love, Father. Yes. And we thank you as women, O oh God, that you raise us to be loving creatures, O oh Father. Loving yes, people, Lord. loving, Lord Jesus, the new creations, Lord. Yes, you made Father. us to be someone, O oh Father, that's a nurturer, yes, the carer, Lord. Lord, the provider. Keeps our home covered, like you said, it's scarlet, Father. That yes, scarlet Lord. is the blood of Jesus that covers us. Yes. Us, Lord. We Thank have to you, move Jesus. in faith, oh God. In these last days, we've got to move in, in, in miracles, oh Father. Yes, oh Father. We've got to Father. raise people up, Father, from the dead. It yes, may not Father. be a natural death, God, but it can be a, a spiritual yes, death you, that Jesus. is binding people, that is keeping people sick. And you yes, wonder, Lord. and sometimes you're wondering why, why are we tied up, why are we drinking these tablets ongoing? It's when we shed all this that we can walk 
in love, yes, that we Jesus. have no sickness. Hallelujah. We walk in the faith of God. Hallelujah. We walk in the love of God. Yes, we Lord. see the joy in our home. Yes, we see our, pa our, our, our family nourished. Yes, we Lord. see them protected. Yes, we Jesus. see, we have faith that when they leave Hallelujah. that door, they yes, are protected. Yes, we thank Lord. God, oh Father, thank that we Jesus. serve Almighty God. Yes, and I thank God for the word that Pastor thank gave you, to Father. Father. Oh Lord, that we yes, know Lord. Jesus, oh yes, God. Lord. Jesus, you are the miracle worker, Hallelujah. Lord. Oh Father, you are loaded, with oh God, with Lord. power. You are loaded, you fully loaded oh god with everything we need for this yes, life god. god you've given us the ability oh god mm. oh father to believe that we the healed oh god yes, to so believe god. father that we have power we have strength oh god Hallelujah. oh father we are loving people oh god yes, we are caring god. father we so have god. dynamite in us lord we can move in the word of god that tells that says that all things are possible, possible. lord yes, that lord. our children are safe Hallelujah. oh god yes, that our Jesus. homes are safe oh god thank and you, we father. thank you lord for the the men in our lives yes, that we so need god. to protect them father so we god. that's why we are you've taken us oh lord from their ribcage oh god to look yes, after god. them yes, oh jesus. father to to empower them lord jesus that they become lord jesus yes, mighty men of god Amen. that our men can preach the word that Amen. our men can that our sons can speak the gospel of jesus yes, christ lord. for in this last days lord jesus. even the children need to preach this word Hallelujah. our children need to share this word oh Hallelujah. thank you father thank what you, a loving god, god we serve yes, what a mighty god we serve yes, we give you yes, all the glory and honor father we pray for our congregation as well each and every yes, brother and sister of yes, ours we cover them with your precious blood father we pray that god those that are sick that they be healed rise up in the name of jesus we command you by your name to rise up now in get up Jesus sister name. get up brother in the yes, name of Jesus, Jesus and name. stand up and walk jump up and dance for the Lord and speak to that sickness Jesus. to come yes, out Lord. now it Hallelujah. has to move in the in name of Jesus, Jesus. you have the authority yes. Jesus said he gave you the power to trample on that sickness yes. trample on the on that mm. sickness now yes, in the name in of Jesus, Jesus. Name. tell it to go out yes, of that Lord. home in Jesus name Thank trample on the spirit of poverty trample on that debt trample on that Jesus name sadness that you may be sitting Yes, yes, tell it to go yes, because it's just binding you it has bound you for nothing you serve a god that is powerful a god that has given you joy don't be robbed of your joy this morning we thank you father in jesus mighty name father we bless each and every one of our people our, our people that we don't know online um, viewers we bless each and every one of you if you too need prayer we pray for you Amen. continually in Jesus' in mighty Jesus name. name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, praise Amen. God. I trusted you were encouraged. I Amen. was very encouraged. You could feel the presence Amen. of God Thank here you, this morning. And I believe that same power, that same presence is with you in your home. Amen. Write to us. Share with us the details are appearing on the screen right now. Um, share with us what the Lord is doing in your life. And uh, if you've never made the Lord Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, I want to encourage you Amen. to do that yes. step. Take that step of faith Don't this morning. Don't wait for tomorrow. Let's not close the program, Pastor Sharon, mm. until we do that. It's very, very yes. important, I believe. Just as you said, mm. you can be Today here the is. one second and the yes. next second you're mm. gone. So if you haven't received Jesus and you don't know Jesus, but you want to right receive now, him as your Lord right and Savior, mm. I think let's just take that step of yes. faith. Let's just say this simple prayer of faith Amen. and uh, i believe something god is going to work a work in your life jesus is the messiah yes. he is the anointed one he's the he's son the of god Amen. hallelujah and he's going to make and he you have time today that's right amen. amen there's no time like the present so let us pray just say this prayer of faith repeat after me heavenly father i come to you in the name of the lord jesus christ of nashville your son I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus as being my personal Lord and Savior. I believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for my sins. And on the third day, he was risen from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit, where he's ascended unto heaven. And right now, Lord Jesus, the door of my heart is open and I receive you from this moment on as my Lord and Savior. I Amen. thank you now for your free Amen. gift of eternal life. And I thank you now for your precious blood. And by virtue of your blood, I am a child Amen. of the Most High God thank in Jesus' Jesus. name. God's Amen. people said, Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. If you've said that prayer, please 
write to us. We want to hear from you and we want to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ Jesus and connect with a church, connect with a good Bible believing faith church mm -hmm. where you can grow your newfound faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Until next time, this is Pastor Ricardo and Pastor Sharon saying to all our wonderful women out there once again, Happy Women's, Women's Day. Day. May you have a blessed Sunday. Amen. And to all the family out there, God bless you. We love you very much. The grace Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with you and your loved ones, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' wonderful Amen. name, Amen. God's people said Amen. Amen. Well, until we next time, you. we Amen. love you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. To greet you, wonderful saints, in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the wonderful day that our Lord has given us for us to rejoice and be glad to it. I'll be doing the offering message this morning. I would like us to look at asking God's way. Our reading will be from the book of Mark, chapter 11, verse 23 and 24, which reads thus For verily I say unto the you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. 24. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe, ye receive them, and ye shall have them. God has given us authority and ways to ask from Him. And when we read this verse today, we see that the main thing that God wants from us is faith. To believe in Him when we ask. We must ask from a premise of having faith in His weight. He has given us weights, He has given us His weight that tells us that when we ask, we receive. We remember in this passage, the, Jesus was traveling with his disciples. He cast the, the fig tree, and when they came back, the fig tree had died. So he was telling the disciples that they also have that kind of authority. And today, God is reminding us that we can access his things through faith. We must base our asking from his weight. We cannot just ask because most of the time we ask based on our situation, on our leg. We ask based on what I'm short of today. Oh God, today I'm, I'm, I'm in short of this, this amount and whatever you need at that time. But sometimes we don't ask based on his weight as to what is his weight telling us to ask for and how to ask. We must remember that his word is yea and amen. So when we ask in his way, in his word, based on his word, whatever we ask for, he's telling us this morning that when we have faith and whatever we ask for, we shall be done. We just need to believe in his word. We just need to take him on his word and stand on his word. If we and when we stand on his word, he is faithful that he will fulfill his word in our lives. We have the authority. The authority is not based on who you are. It's not based on what we have. It's not based on where we are. But it's based on who we are in him. It's based on the authority of his word. Remember that when we got born again, we became his heir. We became his children. So we've got that authority that we must walk with, that we must use, so that wherever we go, we can ask for him and we shall receive. He has given us his ways when he says that we must sow so that we can reap. Those are his ways that we need to stand on. Commit to doing those words so that we can have you all exercise that authority and be able to reap from that weight. We need to get our desires from His weight. 
not our situations because sometimes we look at our situations and we it, it confuses us but when we look at God, when we look at God's word, when we base on it that he told us that we are the heads, we are not the tail. He told us that we are rich, we are not poor. He told us that when we plant, we reap. It doesn't matter what the situation is outside. Because when we look outside, then we get confused. But when we look at his word, we, make, we are sure of the answers from there for us. It is God who determines the level that we are at or that we should be at. Because when we believe in his weight, when we stand on his weight, then his weight takes us to where we are supposed to be. And God has stated clearly in his weight that he's got all the best desires for us only. We need to do what the word of God commands us to do. We need not based anything that we do based on our situation. We need to base it on God's word. When we look at the, the story of the prodigal son, when he came back to his father, because of the situation that he was in, he thought being a servant was better. He thought because of the situation he was in, he thought that he doesn't deserve to be his father's son. But when he got back, the father remembered who he is in him. And it was like he never left. He took him as the son that he is in him. Because to him, he never changed being a son. Whether he left and squandered all his money or he didn't, but to him, he was still his son. So we need to remember who we are this morning and stand on God's weight and do what God tells us to do this morning and commit to God's ways because in God we are who he says he is. We don't need to move out of that. We need to make sure that we stand firm on that. We must remember that God is faithful. God is, is faithful and he's watching over his weight to fulfill it. So when his word is in us, when we are living his word, he is faithful to fulfill it in our lives. So this morning, I'm here to remind you let, that let's ask God's way. Let's ask God's way. Not looking at our situation, because our situation tells us that we don't have money, we can't give to the church. We don't have this, we can't do this. We don't have time, we can't do anything for the church. But who we are in God reminds us this morning that we can ask in God's way. And God is faithful to fulfill his weight. And we need to believe in him with our whole selves, with our being, with our wealth, with all our lives. So that he, he who is faithful and just, he will fulfill his weight in our life. May you be reminded this morning to stand on God's way, wait and ask God's word.